into another dimension, a dimension of insight, a dimension of understanding. You are entering a place where reality collides with truth. There are no limits, there are no boundaries. This is our planet radio. that we welcome back to All Planet Radio for uh, what has been kind of a gap. Jeff was here um, about a year ago in August 2013, and we welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Jeff Harvey, welcome. Oh, nice to be with you again, Randy. It was good speaking with you. It's good to have you back. Um, you obviously have a lot of information uh, given your background and, and the work that you've done over the years. and. Uh, Obstacles you and you yourself have had to um, constantly deal with. And you're coming back today to speak specifically on um, energetic healing modalities. Um, <clears throat> Jeff, we're, we're, we're in this period of time where everything's off balance. The planet's off balance. Our physical bodies are being pounded by all kinds of forces. Obviously, we've got major diseases. We have the... Um, Fukushima radiation, we are being barraged with EMF frequencies all, all around us, and so people need cutting-edge healing today, and that's what you supply. You are currently working with a number of modalities, but your most recent is probably one of the most interesting subjects I've delved into in science in a long time, and that is the Easy Water H302 hydration catalyst. Do you want to talk about that? Absolutely. It, um, <laughs> it saved my life, uh, literally. In February of this year, uh, I had uh, went and gone to the VA on some routine blood testing, and um, they gave me three days left to live. And I was a little bit floored by this. I couldn't understand how in the world my kidneys and liver could shut down so quickly I had been feeling a bit of a malaise over the past few months before that and had been working on it uh, with several energetic delivery systems. And evidently it was not getting better, it was getting far worse. So what we found was is that there's an epidemic going on in our country right now, but you would think, epidemic? Okay, what disease is that? And it turns out it's not a disease, it's many. And I'll detail that for you because this is the strangest thing that we came across. Uh, what happened was uh, we had been given three days left to live. And I, uh, I went and set my affairs in order. I was all set with that. I'm okay to go to the other side. I'm very curious to see what's going on over there. So I laid down that night and I thought, well, you know, I'll just put on an internet radio uh, program. And I did. And there was a Dr. Jerry Pollack that was on there mm -hmm. talking about water. And he was talking about the fourth phase of water. He had written a book on just that topic. You know, and most of us are familiar with water being, you know, liquid, uh, solid, or vapor. However, there are many phases of water, evidently. And it turns out there's several that are liquid. And the one I'm talking about is one of the liquid phases of water, other than just H2O like you're familiar with. We're talking specifically about H302, uh, H503, uh, H907. Many of these different uh, combinations have some free electrons to donate to the process, and they help with uh, hydrating the body. So what happened was, is I was listening to him talk, and he talked about a scientist who had actually gotten a state change, and it was verified by Penn State, Arizona State, and Washington State Universities. So this isn't just some guy's opinion of what he has there. This was vetted by the top material science guy in the world at the time, Rustam Roy. So we... I heard this, and his statement was 
that people are getting end-stage kidney disease reversed in as little as 30 days out of the danger zone. It didn't um, cure the process. It got you out of the danger zone. Well, in my way of thinking, that's uh, that's way, way ahead of three days left to live. Right, right. So I contacted him, and I got in hold of the scientist, and I told him my situation, and the bad news was he only had one output left on his processors um, because so many people had needed help. He was down to one output left, and he said, I'll give this to you so we can save your life. And I said, well, if you do that and it works... I'll talk about it on internet radio shows, and I'll even put it on my website. So I, I first went and I talked to some of the people who had done it before and had written testimonials, and I spoke to the people directly, and uh, it was staggering some of these stories. Uh, one gentleman had been a, uh, a rancher out in the Midwest or uh, the Western states, and he also ran a construction uh, program. Mm -hmm. And so this is a really high-functioning, very, very driven fellow. And, you know, it's uh, blazingly hot out where he is. And uh, he was down to the point where he couldn't even walk across his house anymore. He was just shut down so badly that it was clear he was going to be a transplant uh, candidate. Mm -hmm. He just... He was almost dead. So what happened was is he went on it. And uh, now here it is, what, two years later, and this guy is back to running two jobs. You know, he's running the ranch and keeping that going. At the same time, he's doing the, the construction work, too. Wow. And uh, That's remarkable. It is. Uh, you know, how do you even fathom something like from I can't walk a couple of feet to I'm back at normal uh, workload, at, and especially that high-functioning workload. So that was one fellow, and there was time after time I spoke with other people that had similar stories. So I went into it, and I said, all right, let's find out. Now, I go to the Veterans Administration because uh, I'm a vet, and they do blood work almost every time you uh, get something major done. So I had a clear history of blood work and what was going on with my kidneys. I just find it odd that it was so late that they actually caught it. Um, they're not very bright there, as you probably know. Uh, the VA is probably the lowest level of health care in the country. Well, and not only that, but the, right now the VA has had its funding cut. It has... Uh, Massive overhauls going on in the operation of it. Look, just as a political commentary for one second here, this is a this is a travesty. What um, this government has done to our our our, our people who serve this country in in terms of uh, health care delivery system. That's my. Well, that's five actually cents. the plan. Yeah, the plan is it's to is take that out. They send them out to war to fight the battles that the New World Order wants fought to keep the revenue process going. And what they do is they inoculate them with vaccines that make them sick and literally kill them uh, months down the line. And the game is, is that you go to war, you fight the battles and get it done, and then you make sure you get your vaccines from them and your really low-level health care so that you don't stay on the planet very long and you're gone. Because they know that there's always another uh, group of young idiots that uh, go into the military out of high school, and they'll never run out of bodies to throw at these wars, which are all orchestrated by the New World Order folks. Yeah. This is not anything to do with freedom. It's nothing to do with terrorism. We state sponsor all of the terrorism that we fight against. Al-Qaeda... That's a CIA, man, CIA manufactured group. Uh, ISIS. ISIS. <laughs> they came out of Al Qaeda. Same thing. CIA backed and funded, so we have a boogeyman to fight. And this is how they keep this going. And in the ignorant people's minds, we're saving humanity and getting peace and helping our country be protected. And it's not anything to do with the truth. It's very simply a revenue posture. So these are the kind of things that are going on, and the VA uh, is just another level of that. And they got caught 
basically allowing people to die. As you heard in the news, yeah. you know, a lot of these Midwestern VAs, um, people would die just waiting to get treated or seen by a doctor. They specifically staff them at low levels um, because it helps make sure that some more will die that way, and it keeps their population control agenda going. So this is what we're dealing with today when you go to the VA. So I use them for testing mainly. The problem is is that if you don't know how to interpret your own tests, um, there's a fair chance you won't even hear about anything life-threatening until months later. So that's what happened to me, and I went through 30 days of this H302 therapy, and it was unbelievable, but in 30 days, my blood work went right down almost to normal. It was, it was astounding how fast it changed that. And you can't lie with blood work, you know, it is what it is. We took it before and we took it after. And it was staggering how many changes we saw in there. And so, just like he has said, 30 days later, I was out of the danger zone. Now, I have months left to go to completely get cleared and get all the cells rebuilt. But my God, from three days left to live to where I'm at now is like night and day. I feel almost like a perfectly normal person. Yeah, that's a pretty amazing testimonial, Jeff. Um, To go into a little bit of what we're talking about in terms of um, the easy water and the hydration, uh, let's get a little bit of a backstory on this because we're talking about what would be generically known as largely structured water, although on a much higher level. Um, You're familiar, of course, with the work of Victor Schauberger and the discoveries that he made regarding regarding, um, energy and how he translated that into this idea of structured waters, like movement in, 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 I guess, a cone-shaped vortex. So that's kind of a a rough background there. If you can fill in some of the the, the details, the scientific and technical side of that. Sure. Um, That's one of the things that um, intrigued me the most was how he got to this position. And the scientist um, that came up with this, uh, basically, (laughs) he came up with it by accident. He had been uh, working with trying to build a distillation unit so he could have nice, clean water for his wife. Mm -hmm. His wife was a bit of a water snob, and she liked her bottled waters. And he was of the opinion that, why would you pay all that extra for bottled water? Um, You know, because in those days, he thought, well, water's water. It's fine. So he said, well, I'll just build a really good distillation unit because he had He had purchased one that was used in the medical community, but the one he purchased, the thing kept breaking down all the time, and he just got tired of it. So he said, look, I'm an engineer. I can handle this. I'll go ahead and I will build one. So he went about starting to build a processor to do water distillation, and he came across a design that uh, he really seemed to have locked onto something because he was taking the water and he was, you know, letting other people drink it and test it and see what they thought. And he was getting all kinds of really strange and positive reactions. And I'll give you an example. You know, people were reporting that they no longer were getting ill like they used to. People had uh, things like kidney failure and liver failure. And, you know, after a short time drinking the water, their their blood tests were showing that they no longer had an issue. And he was like, all right, something's really wild going on here. He tells one story, too, about his neighbor where he had, uh, he had actually taken a glass of this water over to his neighbor. And uh, his neighbor was in his yard, and he, he poured a glass of this. Um, into a plastic drinking container, and he took it over to his neighbor, and he said, look, this is the best stuff you'll ever taste. Try this. And the guy took a mouthful and then spit it out on the ground. He goes, this tastes like gasoline. What the heck is this? And Steve thought, well, that's really odd. What the heck is that? Well, it turned out that this water is such a perfect solvent that it literally takes all the heavy metals and the chemicals out of plastic oh. or metal, and it puts that right into the water. You know, so not a really good thing. 
It's what? basically pull, like pulling PCBs into the field of the water. Yeah, yeah. And so, wow. you know, you're literally dosing your neighbor here. So he realized, okay, we can't be doing this. And it turned out it was the the plastic right, right. that the water was sucking those chemicals out of. So he realized that you cannot put this water in plastic or metal or wood. You've got to use it in either porcelain or glass. And then you get no negative reactions, but tremendous levels of positive reactions. So, you know, he found a, uh, a simple solution to that. Just, you know, pour it into a glass glass and drink it. So he saw all these strange changes that were really interesting. So he took it to Penn State, Arizona State, and Washington State Universities. Uh, because they had big material sciences divisions. And at the time, Penn State and Arizona State were being worked on by Rustam Roy, who was considered the father of material science in our country. Mm -hmm. So this is a guy who was testing all kinds of structured waters, you know, hundreds and hundreds of them. And, you know, he's testing things like the Kangen waters, the double helix waters, uh, the trivortex waters, and all those other waters that are out there that are claiming to be really phenomenal healing waters and all this and that. And out of all of those that he tested, this was the only water that had a state change. And what I mean by that is into the fourth state of uh, water. So literally, he was debunking them by the hundreds and hundreds, and our water was the only one that actually had a state change. And it was provable and it was documented. So it turned out that this was truly unique water coming out of this processor that he built, which was basically a distillation unit. And the way it worked is, is he lives out in the Midwest and they have a really deep remote well that they draw their water from. And he took that water and put it through 13 stages of purification and cleansing before he put it into his processor. Then, once it got into the processor, he hit it with a specific pressure, temperature, and frequency so that it would basically have a very strong reaction. And what it did was, literally, it unstructured the water and then restructured the water so that all of the atoms in it lined up with the M and W waves and the microwaves. So it was really coherent, and evidently, it was tremendously charged up by the process. They were putting so much energy into the bond between the hydrogen and oxygen that it was, when you drink it, you would actually get that charge delivered to your cells. And it opened them up dramatically so that the aquaporin channels, which for those who don't know, are the channels that water molecules go through to get into your cell. So it basically crowbarred these bears open and uh, forced massive amounts of hydration in through. And as you may already know, as it draws in the water molecules in, it also draws in oxygen and nutrients. Yes. Thereby making that cell almost bulletproof and for quite some time. So this is the science behind how it works. And it... Uh, it was a tremendous advancement in science. Tremendous. Is it, a fair, is it a fair statement to say, Jeff, that as humans living on this planet now, we're probably all suffering from some level of dehydration? I think that that's clearly the enemy today. And we came up with a reason for it. I was talking to an ex-physicist, and we were talking about how the chemtrails coming down are loaded with barium. And barium they use for um, a water sequestering device. In other words, they can actually use that to suck water out of the atmosphere and create clouds with it. And that's when I made the connection. I realized that when we breathe that barium in, it's pulling the moisture out of the cells in our body. Right down at the cellular level, it's dehydrating you massively. Well, not and, only that, but we have aluminous oxide suspended as well in these, in these chemtrails, which is also a desiccant agent. Yeah, and so you're, you're literally fighting against a method that you have no way to fight against. And what we realized was is that this water is the only thing that can fight against the damage from the chemtrails and the dehydration. 
And what we're trying to figure out, though, is, 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 remember I talked about, you know, it doesn't just wipe out one type of disease structure, it's many. Mm -hmm. And when we realize that all these different diseases like liver failure, kidney failure, uh, many of the cancers, uh, and many other things, um, they will reverse if you superhydrate the cells so that they have the nutrients and the oxygen to fight uh, whatever the disease structure is. So what we realized was is all these different diseases come about because as one person becomes hydrated, they may get liver failure before they get kidney failure or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And so that's what was going on. People were getting all kinds of different diseases, and this was remediating all of them. And so we realized it had to be a common factor, and it turned out it was the chemtrails. And the reason why regular water no longer will hydrate you properly is because it's very simple. We have so much EMF background interference with our body's abilities to operate on the cellular level, they no longer can fight these things. And when you drink regular water, it just will not hydrate the cells like it used to. And this water, because it's such a hydrating state and it has a state change, it will do that. So many, many different disease types are remediating because we are rehydrating the cells to a tremendously high level. Just to kind of give um, people who are listening to us a little bit of background, um, I want to recommend, too, you go over to YouTube. I'll put a link up with the show and look at the video by Dr. Gerald Pollack called The Fourth Phase of Water. Excellent that, video. Because I, I, think this, I think this video is in layman's terms. It's not tech speak. It's not high science. So the average person can watch this video, and he uses some very simple graphics to kind of explain what's going on here, this fourth phase is very interesting. We have the three three common states of, of water, solid, liquid, and vapor. And then we have this fourth phase, which, as Dr. Pollack explains, actually falls between the first and second. Now, this is not, this, as I understand it, is not new information. Can you kind of fill us in a little bit on that? Sure, sure. When you look at the different phases of water... Um, you know, we're all familiar with, you know, ice cubes as being the solid and standard H2O being the liquid, and then obviously steam being the uh, gas phase or the, uh, the air phase. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is that steam has a tremendous amount of energy in it because it's stored energy from the heating process of the water because when it goes to vapor, all that energy is stored right in the water. So you get a, a tremendous charge right from that. Then on top of it, with the microwave process, we're charging the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen with massive amounts of energy in there. So what you're getting is, is a different state, a different liquid state of water than H2O, um, so you're probably getting something like H302 or H503 or et cetera, et cetera. And this is what's really happening. So in those phases, those new phases, there are many, many different properties that those waters have uh, that are absolutely different than H2O. And most people don't know this, but inside the cells of your body, it's H302, not H2O. Very, very much different. So what mechanism is converting H2O in going into our body into the, um, the H3O2? Well, it's the fact that we are unstructuring the water with the microwave process, which is microwave distillation. Mm -hmm. So we're stripping all of that structuring that the water may have down to nothing, and then we're totally restructuring it by changing the amount of energy and the bond between those two molecules, the hydrogen and the oxygen. So literally, it's totally changing the state of that particular uh, liquid to something new, something brand new, and something that was verified by Penn State. They used their laboratories to test this, 
and they proved the state change in this particular liquid. So it's very unique in all of the waters that were ever tested. Uh, no one else has a state change that we know of. And what we challenge people is there's a lot of people out there claiming all kinds of things about their structured water, and we always say, look, uh, put your money where your mouth is. Go down to Penn State and get Raman spectroscopy done. And what that does is it will test for that state change specifically. And Dr. Pollack, when he wrote his book, he was talking about the 270 nanometer uh, light range and how that's where you can identify a lot of these waters and the fact that they will have a state change. So it's, it's the way we do the gold standard of testing for state change. And to date, not a single solitary water out there has been able to duplicate the state change that we had when we got it tested. So we are singular out there. There's nobody else doing what we do. Well, I know this is a, a big area of interest in the health field. In fact, I actually have, and I won't name anyone here, I actually have a, uh, a device, a filter that, re- that, that structures water. Um, and I have to say that the device itself, and this is a small handheld unit, when you put water through it, it's basically working off of the vortex principle. The water tastes wetter. It, 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 it's much cleaner and crisper tasting, um, especially once you express it in a glass. My complaint about the filter itself that I bought was basically that it's plastic, which right away concerns me if we're structuring water. Yeah. If it, um, if it can be used in a plastic container, it is not structured to a high level because what happens is, is when you structure that to a high enough level, the water turns into a super solvent and will suck those chemicals right out of the plastic. You know, people who have used our water and held them in plastic carboys, um, after a couple of weeks, it will literally disintegrate the plastic. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you don't find other people claiming that because they just don't have a state change. You know, they've got some nice properties. The water tastes a little wetter because you get a little bit more surface tension in it, but it doesn't do the reaction that causes all that energy to go in there and do the the solvent process. That's why with ours, no metal, no wood, and no plastic. You have to put it in glass. When we ship it, we ship it in glass mason jars for just that reason. It has to be protected, and so... By keeping it in glass containers, you wind up getting all the properties and none of the chemicals coming out of any other uh, type of material. So talk a little bit now about the application of the water, how it can be obtained, how it can be used, what um, specific spectrum of um, maladies it's being successful with, and a little bit of the specificity about how you are applying it and using it, Jeff. Sure. Um, and there's a lot to that. There's a tremendous amount of uses for this. Let's, let's go over um, some of the basics. First of all, um, you can put the water through the processor any number of times, and we use 1x to, um, to delineate the fact that it went through the processor one time. So that's one separate product. Now, that particular product is what we have used for liver failure, kidney failure, um, cancers in the end stages, Lyme disease, Mm -hmm. uh, lupus, and many, many, many others. Tremendous effect because it's the main product that hydrates at such a high level that it gets the sheer volume in there of hydration. Now, we have a product that's called 10X, and that's a totally, totally different product. You know, some people say, well, that's 10 times more powerful than 1X, and we say, no, that's not what's going on here. You know, it seems to be, but it's not. It's got nothing to do with it. Uh, The 10X does go through the processor 10 times, but that's where any similarity stops. Because when we're working on something like liver failure or kidney failure, cancer, or some other disease state in the body, we use 1X because it has the most effects in getting you out of that situation faster. 
So the 10X we use a little differently. The 10X we use for topical work on the body. If you have moles or warts or um, melanomas or other skin aberrations like that, you would take a cloth um, cosmetic patch and put it over the area you want to work on and you would put several drops of the 10X water on it and allow it to soak in for maybe 15, 20 minutes and do that a couple of times a day for two or three months and the problems go away. You can take totally pitch black moles and turn them rosy pink in just a few weeks. It's it's amazing how fast the changes take place and sooner or later they just go away. They totally shrink and they're gone. So for skin anomalies, that's what you would use is the basic 10X. So that's for uh, surface issues. Now then there's a third product called 10X Silver where we take the same 10X product and we put five parts per million of silver into the solution. Now, you and I both know that if you look at a lot of the silver products on the market, they're two, three, four, five hundred parts per million. Right. And, and the reason they have to go to such high levels to get any effect is because they don't have a delivery system to get it into your cells. We use the 10X as the delivery mechanism, and it slips only five parts per million into your cells, so you don't get a toxic dose of silver. You get a very, very therapeutic dose of silver. And so this is the reason why we went to this process. The 10X is a tremendous delivery mechanism for many things. And the silver product, what that's used for is things like Morgellons disease. We actually have a testimonial on our website on a uh, woman that we tested it on and got excellent results. Less lesions appearing on her legs where she had a lot of lesions. And for the first time in years, she finally had enough energy to go out with her girlfriends and have a night on the town. Mm -hmm. And you talk to Morgellon sufferers that are chronic, you know, several years, you, you'll realize just how rare that is. And that came from the Tenex Silver product. And that was only after a few weeks or a month of use. So clearly, it's one of the few things on the planet that can actually give you positive results on Morgellons disease. So that was a really big one. So we use that, the 10X Silver, for either Morgellons or if you have an infectious disease, that's good for that. Now we did take the 10X and the 10X Silver off the market, mm -hmm. temporarily only, of course. But what happened was, is we received so many orders, we were backlogged by over two months. And we just don't want to have a reputation like that. So we took it off the market until we can get caught up on the orders. So when every last one of those is shipped, then we'll put it back on the web. So what is the capacity right now for production of these? I, I, I get the sense that the, right now there's a limited capacity for this. Uh, what is what, what is your sense of the capacity, and, and are, is there the ability to increase this uh, to the point where not only would the availability be higher, but that the, that the costs would possibly drop a little bit? Well, the availability, you're right, is an issue at this point in time. And, and basically, it's because we don't have enough processors built. They're unbelievably expensive to build, and they're phenomenally expensive to operate. These run massive amounts of electricity, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These processors get okay. no rest at all. And if you know anything about electronic components for building power supplies and things of that nature right. that would run a processor, you know that they have a, uh, a lifespan and a mean time between failure. Right, exactly. And so the duty cycle is how much a percent of the time the component should operate without any trouble. And almost nothing out there has a 100% duty cycle. No, absolutely not. I can tell you that. I deal with technology all the time. Yeah, they're supposed to run 50% to maybe on the high side 70%. And we're running these things 100% of the time. So we are burning units out like they're going out of style just to keep up with the demand. So for us, we have a bit of an issue getting enough processors built to keep 
um, the order time frames down. So we are building new processors as we go, but it's just not possible right now to build enough of them to keep up with the demand currently. So on the 1X product, which the good news is that's what 90% of the population needs is the 1X because that's what gets you out of all these deep disease states like mm-hmm. liver failure, kidney failure, cancer, lupus, et cetera, et cetera, Lyme disease. And so what we do is is that particular product is down right now to about a three-week um, uh, backlog of orders. It goes up and down from that point uh, up to as much as two months. But we've got enough processors built right now, it seems to be staying steady at about three weeks. So if you made an order today, uh, three weeks from now it would ship to you. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are actually cutting that down even further, and we expect to be down to one week. Uh, within another mm, probably two or three weeks, we'll have it down to uh, one week delay in shipping, and that would be acceptable to us. The 10X and the 10X Silver, that's going to be a while before we get that down to an acceptable level. So again, we took it off the the market for a short period of time till we catch up on the orders. But let me give you an example, something like chronic Lyme disease. In chronic Lyme disease, we would use both the 10X Silver and the 1X to remediate that state because the 1X will help the cells build up to a level where they become so bulletproof um, that the bacteria that's in there uh, won't be able to keep tearing you back down. And sooner or later, you'll get it all wiped out and cleared. And what we use the 10X Silver for in that process is we use it as an inoculant to basically put some silver into the cells to get them remediated against this uh, while the 1X does the rest of the work because the majority of the work is done by the 1X, which is why when we tell people what to order, we tell them, you know, 1X is what almost everyone needs. And the 10X is just an aid in the process for certain disease situations. And, and the way this is, if, the way to think about this is as a protective measure because if we're getting dehydrated on a consistent basis from chemtrails and whatever else is going on, like you know the EMF um, signal interference that screws up the communication right. between your brain and your nervous system, um, the silver acts as an inoculant to help knock down the process, and the 1X finishes it off so that it, it, it can't keep hold of the body. And that's the best way to look at it, I would think. So what would be a regimen that somebody, say, suffering from um, something similar to what you had would, would undergo? Uh, an, initial, sure. an initial dosage and then maintenance, prophylaxis, or whatever. Right. The way we do it for, let's say, liver disease, kidney disease, and cancers. Let's just take those three big ones. All right. We want to get them out of the danger zone in 30 days. So you would use the 1X uh, to do that because it'll get you there fastest uh, because it is totally different than the 10X. It has way different effects. And what you do is you drink the 1X undiluted, straight the way it comes in the jar. Now, 10X can be diluted from 15 to 1 down. But it will still not have the same effects as the 1X. The 1X is superior. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Why is that? What is that? How does that work? Well, when you put the water through the processor 10 times, it changes the effects that the state change will have on it. And those effects are totally different than it is for going through the okay. processor one time. Okay. It turns out one time is optimum. Mm-hmm. for 90% of situations out there. Uh, ten times through the processor gets you very specific differences in that liquid, and so that makes it useful in different situations. 
And what you drink on the 1X is basically 15 to 64 ounces. Now, most people drink between 15 and 30 ounces per day. It's usually out in the West where it's really hot, where people drink more than that, like up to 64 ounces a day. Mm -hmm. And we did find there was a difference in how it acts, depending on how much you drink. The more of the liquid you drink per day, the faster the disease situation clears. And we're not positive why that is, but our suspicion is is that basically it's the sheer volume of that liquid going into the cells that hydrates the cells more fully and to a higher degree than just 15 ounces a day would. So your body makes use of that extra in, in a more complete manner. So you get out of your situation faster. So you basically but, are just pounding this water down at that level. Yeah. And so if you look at um, the testimonials that we have on the website, um, it's pretty clear that most of the people that were drinking only 15 ounces a day still were getting out of their chronic disease situations. So you can drink as little as 15 ounces a day and get fabulous results. So as a minimum 15, and most people will go up between 15 and 30 a day, you know, depending on what their body asks them for. And this is the really interesting part. Mm -hmm. You can use this on babies, adults, um, plants, animals, fish, and it will cause similar remediation of issues in all of them. So you literally can use this on infants. And what we have found that is when you take this, you have this wide range of people that it can affect in a very positive way, and you can get them all out of these disease states. And 1X being the major one, no dilution necessary, uh, you can use this either as an ongoing source for your disease issue. Let's say you have a chronic disease. Um, let's say it's kidney failure, like mine was. Right? I'll be drinking this probably for eight months to a year to get completely out of the situation. But in 30 days, I was out of the danger zone, and here I am now at six months, and I feel tremendous by comparison. It's, there is no comparing what you felt like going into this and today. I feel as close to normal as I ever did. And that's that's something to behold. It's hard to even imagine that when you're that deep in the chronic disease state. But chronic disease people, as I was saying, they drink this water and only this water. So they go all the way through the protocol and they stay on this and they don't drink any other water. Um, so those people will drink, you know, 15 to 30 ounces a day for, you know, 8 to 12 months. And they get out of their chronic disease state as evidenced by the testimonials. So these aren't just my story and my testimonial. These are testimonials for many people. So you don't have to take my word for it. There's loads of people that are saying the same thing. Do you currently have or are you aware, Jeff, of um, any professionals? Uh, let's let's disqualify the allopaths for a minute because they don't have an interest in this. But uh, any practitioners in homeopathy or other healing fields that have been able to observe this and perhaps document it? There are quite a few that are doing testing now. Um, we've been contacted recently by several uh, to do this for their patient bases so they can actually help them. And we have a model um, where they can actually invest in it at a high level and uh, use it to help get their people out of the situation and still make a little bit of profit on it. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that invest in this are doing it for philanthropic reasons. They're not really in it for the money. Um, and th th there's really no way to do it for the money because basically uh, this is so expensive to make. You know, the 1X costs $225 for three gallons of it. And we ship it in glass mason jars. And in the summer, it's 384 ounces that we ship per shipment which is about three gallons. And in the wintertime, it's a few less ounces uh, per jar because we use a much thicker anti-freezing glass. Uh, 
uh-huh. um, from ball or mason jar people uh-huh. so that we can make sure it's protected. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you were he- dealing with shipping this in the wintertime when well, I, 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 I would imagine that, that there must be some way, but a lot of things simply can't be shipped in the winter because of the freeze cycle, you know, in the northern climates. Yeah, we don't have any problem with that because we ship in a different kind of glass container in winter. It's much, much thicker, um, which limits how much we can put in the actual jars. But uh, we do pretty good because the 1X gets shipped to you in 12 32-ounce jars um, in the summertime. In the winter, there's a couple of less ounces per jar because of the thickness has gone up so much to protect it from freezing. And we package the daylights out of these so they don't get cracked or broken or, you know, how these shipping companies are. They're chucking mm-hmm. boxes across the room. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> a regular box would just literally be a pile of broken glass and water at the end of the process. We use something very, very tough. And it seems to work well. I know that um, one of the objections that most people have, especially when you get into this type of exotic and it is exotic from the standpoint that this is not a common, well-known modality yet. We'll hope for better. Is is expense? But when we begin to look at the cost of this, and and, and, and I've shared this a couple of times now about my encounter with the healthcare system last year when I I had a um, an infection that went systemic on me that wound up uh, with a surgery and a barrage of antibiotics going into my body and over. Uh, six weeks of me being down, not being able to work, not being able to function. And the over cost, overall cost of that in the tens of thousands of dollars to treat what was ra- actually a very simple infection at the onset that just got away from everybody. So, you know, talk a little bit about the cost benefits that you see and how you think this would be uh, an alternate modality that can fit into an average person's budget. All right. What we do for people with infectious issues, um, the 10X silver is helpful, but what you really want to do is you want to hit it really hard with uh, an antimicrobial that will knock down the infection fast. And what I prefer for that, and many naturopaths do, is a product called loricidin. Uh, L-A-U-R-I-C-I-D-I-N. I carry it on my website in the cold and flu section, and it's tremendous for knocking down all kinds of infections. And it's just little pellets uh, that are derived from organic coconut oil, and the active ingredient is monolaurin. Uh-huh. So it's very effective. It's little pellets. You just take a couple of scoops of that with food, of course because I think it's easier to handle that way. And you wash it down with some cold water. You do not let it sit in your mouth, because when those pellets melt, they taste bad. But uh, they do a tremendous job, and they don't wipe out all your good flora in your intestines like an antibiotic would, but yet they're more effective than antibiotics. So it, it does a really good job in the body cleanly, without damaging or harming that client. So a lot of practitioners in the cold and flu season, they just stock up on canisters of it. And if you keep a canister at home in your medicine cabinet, that'll last you for several months. Um, because when you get something, let's say you, you in the wintertime, you start getting a little tickle in your throat mm-hmm. uh, from a sore throat, or you get a little, um, a little bit of itchiness or scratchiness in your eardrum from an earache. The second you get the very beginning of it, you take three scoops. You typically will knock this right down, and you won't even get it. You don't get the cold. You don't get the flu. You knock it out before it hits. Now, if you didn't get to it in time, then you can use this to cut down the length of time. You'll experience all the symptoms. So there's two ways to look at it there. And the name of that product again? Sure. It's Lorisidin, L-A-U-R-I. C I D I N. Just, it's a tremendous tool for helping with any kind of infection, and uh, that's that's our preferred go-to guy for it because it just does such a fast, fast job on it. 
And see, this is one of the things that I really like about what you're doing is uh, anybody can go to your website, jefftech.net, and uh, you have a listing of all the different areas that you treat from uh, adrenal hormones right down to kidney, renal, nutrients. You, you have a full spectrum approach to this. Talk a little bit about how you're combining these different modalities, Jeff. Sure. There's one that applies specifically to you that we're going to cover. But before I do that, I'll give out the actual website and my phone number. I, I do not want anyone to send emails to me. I have some vision issues, so I don't do email. However, I'm more than happy to take a phone call from someone. And my phone number is 570-219-2025. And you can ask anyone who has contacted me before. I'm quite generous with my time to make sure your question gets answered properly. Now, let's talk about if you have massive amounts of antibiotics you've taken in the past, um, you absolutely have cell wall damage on your intestines. If you only had one course of antibiotics over a few years, then you're going to have damage in, in there, and your good bacteria will have been wiped out in specific areas. Mm -hmm. But the cell walls may still be intact, and we do not use regular probiotics and prebiotics because they're absolutely nearly ineffective. The Human Biome Project completed uh, a year or two ago, and there were about 80-some universities and institutions and hundreds of medical doctors putting together the map for the human intestinal flora. And what they came up with was about five strains that when dosed at about 2,000 times the normal level, it repopulates the intestines beautifully. Now, standard probiotics and prebiotics won't do that. And the reason why is the acid in your stomach and the acid in your intestines is so powerful, it kills 50% of them or more. So you're getting almost no benefit from it when you take them. Mm -hmm. But there's a new class of pre and probiotics that came out out of this study that was done, and they're called sporebiotics. Now, I use Megasporebiotic on my website. It's only available through a physician, and it is on my website. And I carry it because what I do. And what it does is it's tremendous for repopulating the good bacteria in your intestinal structure. But, and it's about 10, 10 times more powerful than anything you'll find in a clinic, even a clinical probiotic like we used to use. Um, so it's that much more powerful. But even it will not work if your cell walls are damaged to the point where you cannot have the good bacteria colonize the walls. So in that regard, then you have to go one step further, and you would use our 1X H3O2 Easy Water to rebuild those cell walls for a couple of months mm -hmm. before you put in the Megaspore Biotic to colonize it. And when you do it that way, it works perfectly. It rebuilds the cell wall structure first, and then you can put in your megaspore biotics and get those things recolonized. So three modalities in one. Excellent. But again, it depends on your level of destruction in there. Well, I can tell you the process is destructive, and, and the amount of antibiotics that they pump into people uh, with very little concern to side effects or long-term effects is it's just... It's callous. I mean, it should be medical malpractice what they do. I wound That up, is correct. I agree with you. I wound up in the hospital twice the second time with uh, basically renal shutdown and uh, beginning stages of pulmonary failure as a result of the antibiotics that they gave me. Yes, and, and they won't tell you about that before they give it to you. Well, they claim they do, but basically they don't. They have you sign no. disclaimers that basically uh, a lot of weasel words that let them get off the hook for what would effectively be malpractice, malpractice. malfeasance. Yeah. And, and, and this is, again, you know, it's why this stuff's important. It's why we cover it on this show, because 
the longer I live, the more I see that the, what the world presents us as solutions are nothing more than big pharma, big oil, big corporatocracy trying to shovel down their for-profit systems at the expense of quality of life. Yeah, and they, they honestly don't care if you don't make it because there's a hundred more right behind you. Yeah, and, it's like uh, what you were talking about earlier with the, with the military. It's basically expendable assets, collateral damage in the world of commerce. And, and the one thing they're looking for is as much revenue as they can get out of you before you go. This is the sickest system yeah. you can imagine. I mean, Jeff, it's taken me years to wrap my head around this because it is alien, literally, uh, is. to my... My my moral code, my sense of values, and even my comprehension of what compromises humanity. I agree with you. It's just it's a situation where that's the reason why people like me and the other medical doctors and uh, naturopaths I work with, we are all putting together our resources so that we can get solutions for each of these problems. And these are where these things come up with. We get a modality that works for one thing, then something else crops up, we make a connection, and sooner or later we get a protocol that's complete and it works well for everyone. And that's how we do it. We just get on the radio and we tell everybody what's going on, how it works, to make sure they have the knowledge that they need to save their life and the life of those who they love. Because at the end of the day, Randy, it doesn't matter whether you don't like the New World Order for what they're doing or how um, some dipshit politician is running your country. What really matters is, are you taking care of those who you love and yourself so that you can have at least as decent a lifestyle as you can get without thinking about or even allowing these other idiots to come into your circle? And once you realize that, you get to the point where you don't even have much discourse on what they're doing because it's such common knowledge that it's clear they're just trying to wipe out a certain segment of the population so they can get the population down to where they can control it better. Right, exactly. The Georgia Guidestones, half, half billion numbers, what they're, exactly. what they're going for. Exactly. And so it's better to worry about the, you and those you love and have a good life than it is to worry about what their plans are. In a lot of ways, this is kind of a conversation that I'm having with a number of people as I do interviews now. And it, it is basically we've got to carve out alternatives. And I don't even like that term because, quite frankly, it seems uh, the term alternative sometimes seems to indicate a, a secondary decision rather than saying we weigh our values in terms of quality of life, which is what I think you're talking about. But the idea of alternative economies and alternative systems of health care, I mean, we're herded into the allopathic pharmaceutical medical system by default. Now and you're talking the right language because herding is exactly what's going on. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because I, we, I, I, I want to keep going, but I also want to break this uh, around an hour for um, when we put this out to affiliates. But let's sure. talk a little bit about that because it is a mentality and it has been sold to us. When you look at what's going on out there, there's a woman I was listening to on the radio a while back. This was only a week or two ago. And she was doing an interview with someone. I, it might have been Mel. I can't remember who. But she was talking about the hurting of America and Agenda 21, where what they're doing is, is they're presenting less and less um, options for us to choose from so they're trying to herd everyone into the cities and away from the rural areas because they don't want you out there because then they can't control you. And what I've told people for years, get the hell out of the cities. Find yourself a reasonable population center um, out in the country in a rural setting where you still have Internet access and you've got reasonable, good quality groceries that you can go to, whether it be farmer's markets or a regional grocery chain that is still supplied at a reasonable level. And that way you can stay away from the cities where all the control measures are being tested. 
And, um, you know, I'm just of the opinion that I don't ever want to be a lab rat. And people in cities are lab rats. Yeah. So you get yourself far enough out in the country. Uh, Pennsylvania, as you know, is one of these states where it's still uh, a lot of rural areas you can live in and still get your technology amenities that you need to run a business. Oh, yeah. You can drive... Um probably about two hours north of where I am here near Harrisburg and be, you can drive for 50, 60 miles and not even see civilization through the northern parts of the state. Uh, it's, we've got, this is a myth of the New World Order that we're overcrowded. We're not overcrowded. No, we're, we're not. We're condensed. That's right. And quite frankly, there's loads of room here in this country. That's why you have so many Chinese people emigrating to the United States. You know, they know where the bullshit is, and so they're not paying attention to that, and they're coming en masse over to our country because it's a lot cleaner as an environment than it is over there. Now, granted, we're not super clean, but we're a whole lot cleaner than China is. Well, it's possible to still get to a place where you have a reasonable buffer between yourself and the industrial zones and the diesel smoke and the noise of, of uh, major metropolitan areas. Exactly. And that's what you're after. You're looking for a buffer zone between you and the, and the really unhealthy nonsense. I think this is a good place to break this segment, uh, Jeff. And we're going to take a break here. We'll do part two. And we will be back shortly with my guest, Jeff Harvey, the website. Again, one more time, Jeff, tell people how they can reach you. Sure. It's www.jeftech.net, which is jefftech.net with only one F in Jeff. And my phone number direct to my desk is 570-219-2025. And I, I don't respond to email, but I always answer my phone calls, and I'll get back with you if you leave a message. Excellent. We'll be back with Jeff Harvey in a minute. Welcome back to the second part of our interview with healer Jeff Harvey. His website is jeftech.net. That's jefftech.net. And um, you can reach Jeff by phone. Uh, Jeff, welcome back to the show. And uh, let's start off by giving out your phone number one more time, because I know, I know that's the preferred way for people to reach you rather than email or the web. Sure. I have some vision issues, so I don't use email. However, I'm absolutely happy to take a phone call. And my direct line is 570-219-2025. And that's here in Pennsylvania, which is on the east coast of the United States for those folks uh, outside the country. Yeah, and that, that phone number is actually very prominently displayed on your on your masthead of your website as well, so folks can uh, avail themselves of that. Uh, those who have gone back and listened to the previous interview that we did, Jeff, which was called Healing the Matrix, know that uh, your background was uh, working in the Navy. You were uh, part of a naval intelligence group supporting a naval intelligence group on the USS John F. Kennedy, and uh, you are also a military-trained remote viewer. Given the comprehensive scope of the work that you are doing in the area of healing, um, talk a little bit about how all of this has worked together, all of the different disciplines that you've discovered, the things that you did both inside and outside the military, and where that brings us today in terms of application of your knowledge and abilities. Sure, and this is directly correlating to what people need to look at on their own development. Um, one of the first things people need to do is to obviously obviously build the strength of mind, uh, be able to have a strong mind and being able to have resolve to do things is, is paramount. It's tantamount to everything. 
So the first thing you need to do is to be able to have a mind strong enough that you can set your mind to do something and do it. And one of the ways to do that is obviously to learn how to lock on to something and not have any other thoughts creep into your mind. So, you know, think of a pencil and look at the picture of the pencil in your mind and take five or ten minutes looking at that pencil and nothing else. No music creeping into your mind, no thoughts, no words, no music, no anything. That's one way to do it. The second way is to blank your mind and keep all thoughts out so that it's just blank. And when you're doing meditation work to try and get in deeper, that's where the real work is. You know, you can listen to what's going on in the Ukraine, what's going on with Ebola, and all these other current events that are out there. Just remember, they are nothing but distractions. Um, you can't get involved in that stuff because the bottom line is, is it has nothing to do with your own development. As long as you focus on you and developing you, Everything else comes into line, and you just have to learn to live with that. And a lot of people, you know, they're, they're very nosy. They tend to want to get out there and get their nose in world events and think that they can have an impact. You're wrong. It's absolutely wrong. The best thing to do is to build you and the people you love up and have a good life and not worry about all that other stuff because that's simply a distraction from you developing yourself and getting the kind of life and family you want. So what I do is I do a combined approach. Uh, basically, I keep my mind strong. I make sure that I know who I am inside. When I go visit a doctor to have testing done on, let's say, my blood work or something, you know, and they tell me, well, you have to do this, you have to do that. I look them in the eye and I say, no, not only do I not have to do this or that or take that drug, however, you need to understand something. You're nothing more than an advisor. I handle my own health care. I make my decisions. You do nothing more than advise me. And when they realize that that's the way it is, they either don't want to deal with you or they realize their place and they actually act as an advisor instead of um, running rule over your health care. And by being strong of mind and making them advise you, you take more personal responsibility for your own actions and your own health. So we start with strength of mind. We move that into how that applies into your life and others you interact with. You know, you don't have to be forced to do things. If a police officer comes and knocks on your door, you do not have to answer it. You know, let him go out to That's his right. yeah. squad car and uh, go play with his uh, digital stuff and, and go hit the next place. You know, you don't have to talk to those idiots. You know, if you want to help, fine. But I'll be honest with you, um, going to a police officer for help is the dumbest thing I can think of. No, they're no, the no. Last please, place to go. You know, one of the one of the misnomers about that is that they're, they're they call them law enforcement, which I, I guess on one level they are. But the police officers, uh, police agencies do not prevent crime. They're not really interested in helping the citizens, so called, at all. What you know, Jeff? What we've discovered is researching the police departments is that they're all corporatized, privatized. They're basically private security agencies, domestic within a particular municipality or township for the purposes of protecting the security interests of the owners. That's really what's going on, and they're more for the corporate side. Uh, police stands for policy enforcer. That's really all they are. They enforce what are called regulations. Those are not laws, and anybody who thinks they are doesn't know much about the Constitution. If it's not in the published in the Federal Register, it's not a law. Yeah. So you really need to know what your rights are before you interact with any organization like that. And this so you really, move from. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say this goes into um, the medical system as well, Jeff. As uh, I've talked about this, but in my illness last year, um, I was probably classified as a non-compliant patient because I did not do what I was told. I did what I thought was best for me, and in fact, I demanded twice to be released from hospitals because I couldn't see that they were fulfilling any purpose. They were just waste. They were racking up bills, wasting my time. 
and basically drawing me out, drawing energy out of out of myself as well as anybody else in there. There's no healing that's going on in these medical institutions. Well, you are dead on right. Um, when I went in over the last couple of years, I signed myself out no less than six or eight times, and you did the right thing because what happens is, as soon as you go in, the first thing you want to do is stick a, uh, a needle in you so that they can put something in. And then later on, a couple of days later, if you're checked in, they take it back out. And so I asked him, I said, you know, there's nothing to happen with this thing. What's it there for? Oh, that's just in case we want to put something in. And I said, well, then from now on, I refuse it. You know, you're not going to stick that in there. And so really what happens is, is they want to be able to do whatever they want when they want. Which includes being able to tranquilize you if you become, uh, let's say, non-compliant. Uh, non-compliant. Exactly. Yeah. Or charging you $135 for a bag of saline solution that's worth more than, no more than a few pennies on the open market. That's exactly what they're doing. They're racking up the bills and just trying to make it uh, profitable. And so you did the right thing by getting out of there before they went and drained your resources and your energy for healing because there's not much healing that goes on in there. I go to the hospital when I need diagnostics for blood. That's basically what I go for. Um, and that gives me an idea of what's going on in my creatinine levels, my albumin, and some of the other things that I use as indicators for the regeneration of my kidneys. When I, uh, when I was dying back in February, you know, my, they gave me three days left to live, and my kidneys had shut down. I was no longer peeing, no urination, no defecation. And so when I went on the H302 protocol, within a week, I was urinating again and defecating. And they expect that your kidneys are going to completely shut down. And that's why they put you on dialysis, supposedly, is to, to help filter that toxin out of your system, as well as draw off excess moisture. Well, they've already damaged me to an extreme amount in dialysis, and I actually had to take over the control of the dialysis myself because they were sending me home almost in a coma. I would go back with massive headaches. I couldn't barely walk. Um, I was shaking so badly I couldn't even get into a wheelchair. Wow. And, you know, literally m I was shutting down because they drew off so much liquid out of my tissues that my organs started shutting down again. So while they're trying to save your kidneys, quote unquote, they're actually shutting them down and other organs to boot. So I had to take back over control and uh, basically cut the amount of liquid they're taking off more than in half so I didn't go out of there and ain't like comatose. And this happened a half dozen times. So you're quite right on, on leaving early or doing whatever you need to do to take control. So when you look at it, you have strength of mind, you need to take care of your nutrition, your supplementation, then you work on the energetics or the information fields that cause your cells to act appropriately, and then you work on the physical using the H302 Easy Water Protocol, and that gives you a full spectrum that takes care of everything that you need to heal. It won't be quick. It'll be slow just like normal because you didn't get into a disease state inside of a, a couple of weeks. It took you years to get there. But we can get you back out in many cases, according to the testimonials, in just a few months. So there's a lot that can happen in a short period of time if you pay attention to those in that sequence. And as far as you know, supplementation goes, I take spiruzan tablets every day because they're 60-some percent plant-based protein. There are boatloads of amino acids and minerals that are necessary to keep your body moving. They're loaded with astaxanthin, which is one of the most massive antioxidants you can buy, better than vitamin E or C by a thousand times. And it helps with the vision. And as you know, I've got vision issues, so I'm trying to make sure that I've got all the nutrients up there that I need uh, to help the eyes heal. So by doing something like that, that takes care of my basic nutrition protocols, and I use the supplements that I have on my website every day 
because I've picked and choose them over years. It took a long time to come up with these. Like we use the immune boost to help replenish some of the minerals and things that are pulled out of the body. And what people don't know that when they go into dialysis for their kidneys, they pull out minerals and all kinds of electrolytes out of your body. Yeah. And they try and resupplement you, but they're never effective at doing it. So you have to take control of that. We're actually developing an electrolyte balanced water using our H three O two Easy Water because it's the best delivery mechanism and it's pure as pure gets. And we're going to develop a um, an electrolyte blend which should be coming out soon that will help people make sure they have what they need in there in the minerals. In the meantime, the Immune Boost uh, on the website does a good job for that with the Spiruzan tablets because then you've got your basic nutrition taken care of. And I use the, uh, what is it, Douglas Labs Ultra Preventative 2 a day, which also is on my website, because that has the methylation cycle items in it as well as some items for anti-aging. And it does all your basic vitamins, your minerals, your amino acids, and and all those groups that you need to get in there to make sure that you're getting healthy. And so by taking care of your supplementation ends, you now have the physical side getting all the, the nutrients it needs to be able to do the building work that you're trying to get done. And then just by adding the easy water, the H302 1X, then you can actually get a really good job done. And if you use something like the Chio, like I use, it's the uh, personal Chio, it has an EMF uh, set of holograms in it that we strobe with a scalar wave generator and a sweep generator 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you just stick this little locket-like device in your pocket and keep it within three feet of your body, and it will strobe your system with all of those codes to line up all of that, and it defeats all of that EMF interference that's blocking your meridian energies. Mm. And for those who don't know, your meridians are energy systems within your body which deliver energy into your organs and glands and tissues so they can operate and function properly. You know, when sunlight hits your body and other light hits your body, it goes into these meridian systems because they're light channels. And they deliver that to the organs and glands so they can utilize that energy. Well, if you have a blockage uh, for some reason because, you know, you're in the middle of a cell phone uh, uh, swimming pool, basically all those signals that are hitting you, you know, uh, police radar and and uh, aircraft radar and uh, the cell phones and everything else that's out there for EMF pollution, it stops your meridian system from getting that energy through. And so then you go to an acupuncturist to uh, get that blockage cleared up, and they're good at doing that. The problem is, is, you know, at 60 bucks a crack for acupuncture, you could buy a personal Chio for 200 and you could have that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, keeping your meridian system clear. So, you know, as a, a way of keeping your energy getting to your organs and glands, it's, it's just plain superior. And uh, it's a good method to save you a lot of money on acupuncture. I want to shift it a little bit here at this point, Jeff, and and this is something that's come up in a number of conversations recently. We know that we have uh, huge issues drifting across the planet now from uh, the Fukushima uh, disaster, which continues, I guess, to melt down into the core of the planet even as we speak. We've got high radiation readings on the West Coast. We're we're finding we're finding radiation uh, readings off scale in all different parts of the of North America and I guess even South America right now. What, if anything, can you commend towards um, maintaining thyroid health and, and stemming off the ill effects of this radiation that's obviously being amplified? Okay, there's, there's several things. First of all, uh, they're finding a lot of people are taking personal uh, Geiger counters with them, the smaller new units that are yeah. much more effective. Yeah. And they're taking them on airplane flights today 
and they're logging as much as 880 counts per minute up there in those flights. Now, you and I both know that if you even hit 100 down here on the ground, you're getting concerned because that's really unhealthy for you. And 880 is just ridiculous. So if you're on aircraft flights, you're getting really dosed. So one of the things that's really important is in the Chernobyl disaster, they had a group of children called the Chernobyl children, mm -hmm. and they were able to help them get out of their uh, radiation damage by giving them about five grams of spirulina a day. So that's one of the reasons why I have massive amounts of spirizan on my website, because it's spirulina and astaxanthin, and we have it in mega dose levels at reasonable prices because I buy 20,000 tablets at a time so you can get it at a, at a reasonable price point. So, you know, we sell, you know, 1,620 tabs for, I think, 130 bucks, 540 tabs for, I think, I don't know, it's close to 50 bucks or less, something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. 48, 49. But the point is, is it's lower than even going to like Marcola or somebody. We really offer a large amount for a small price so you can dose it at high levels and keep that out. And our 1X water, the H302 Easy water, one of the things we used it on was a fellow that had plutonium poisoning. He came uh, to Steve with plutonium poisoning and he's shutting down. He was dying. And they put him on the 1X, and now he is recovering beautifully. It's just incredible how fast it remediates it. And Steve, the reason why he tried that on the guy was they had done some work with some really heavily radiated water that they put through the processor. Mm -hmm. And it totally cleaned up the radiation out of it. Now, it left behind a massive amount of caking material uh, that had to be cleaned up out of the processor but it literally remediates radiation. It's tremendous. So between the spiruzan and that, that helps. And you can actually take the small personal Chio. Now this is, this is a locket sized device. And as I told you, it takes care of EMF background radiation. But what I didn't tell you is you can purchase a custom hologram just for radiation work. And you can stick it on the back of the Chio and it will still strobe that, and it will knock down background radiation by about 20%. We've done the tests on it. So that's another way of improving the amount of uh, radiation that actually gets to you, and you can really do a lot of help by keeping those meridian systems flowing and getting energy to your body so it doesn't affect you much. And then if you want to get into even more uh, work you can do. You can take zeolite liquids under the tongue daily, and they will uh, they will help drag the radiation out of the body. I'm putting the zeolites on my website uh, within the next uh, 48 hours. You'll see them on the website. We're going to have a section just for radiation, and uh, we're going to cover that quite completely because I want to make sure people understand that there's tons you can do to solve that problem. You don't need to worry about the radiation anymore if you're doing things to ameliorate it. I don't want to echo the memes, but uh, obviously Ebola is huge out there right now. And, and, you know, you and I talked earlier in the show today about we don't go into fear. We don't continue to operate in the, the memes that are being reverberated by the powers that bees uh, media outlets. But Ebola is interesting in that it has it actually carries this whole fear thing with it i mean my god when you start talking about bleeding out of your eyes i mean people just freak out um we have reports from cdc whistleblowers now that this has been biologically altered it has in fact absolutely been patented by our own government as a weaponized uh, disease to, I believe, let's say, flatten out the population. Uh, again, can you give us some strategies on dealing with Ebola, both real and imagined? Absolutely. All right. First of all, um, anytime there is a quote unquote scare that's in the media, you need to understand it's there for a reason. It's not that it just got there and they're trying to inform you and help you. 
they put it there so they can get some legislation through or they can actually help a company get massive profits by developing an antivirus for it. That's really all that's going on. Right now, the government works hand in glove with the pharmaceutical companies so they can actually enrich each other and uh, really make a ton of cash. That's all the Ebola scare is. But if you're worried about it, just keep your immune system boosted up, you know, and that immune boost is a good thing to use for it. Um, the Spiruzan supplements keep you loaded up with what you need to keep the body functioning. And by using the personal uh, EMF, uh, Chio, you can keep that meridian system flowing energy to your organs and glands so they can fight off things like Ebola and others. We also are going to be reintroducing our 10x silver, uh, which is an easy water. And that's going, we use it right now for more gallons, but we actually had so many orders for it that we had to actually take it off the market or we would have killed our own reputation by having it out there because we were two months out just in fulfilling orders. It's, it just sold that well because it works so well. It's only five parts per million of silver in it, but those five parts per million get into your body better than two or three or four or 500 parts per million that you would buy on the shelves from like ASAP or somebody else mm -hmm. because we use the 10X as a delivery system to get it into the cell. We crowbar open the cells and we put it in there. No better delivery system anywhere, which is why we have no fear of Ebola or any of other of those genetically modified diseases. It's not an issue. And we will be reintroducing 10X within the next month. We have a new processor coming online just for 10X, and uh, we will be doing it. The problem is that the 10X takes three days to make and then an extra day to put the silver in. So you're looking at four days to make a batch of this, and that's just one gallon. So we have to build more processors of it. And to that end, we have a way for folks to help us if they're interested in helping the population. Uh, there is a way that you can actually buy the product and help get more processors online. And the way we do this is, is we have two or three levels that you can actually help at. If we build a $300,000 processor, we can make massive amounts of this stuff, just massive. Mm -hmm. But there's very few people that can afford to help us with that. So we have a $14,000 level, which basically, if you invest in at that level, you get every dime back in your water, plus 750 extra in water. So you get everything back that you put in, plus an extra 1750 in water. If you want to invest at the $7,000 level, we have a, a really neat thing we're doing. We take two of you and we build a processor just for you folks. And what we do is, is you then go to the head of the line. You don't wait in front of anybody else to get your order. We ship every week for that. You put in 7,000 and you get back 7,000 worth of water. So you get 31 shipments of that every week. So every week you're going to get a shipment until you get all 31 shipments done. And you go to the head of the line, which really makes a big difference because you don't have a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever, to wait to get it. And you also can resell it if you wish. Now, we don't mind if you mark it up $10, $20, $30. That's fine. But we don't want anybody marking it up double or something like that because people are dying out there and they need this. So a small markup is okay, but uh, we're going to shut you down if you uh, start getting egregious. But the other thing you can do is you've got a processor with 12 extra outputs on it, and you're getting one of those outputs for yourself, and you're going to the head of the line. Well, if you decide to sell one to your neighbors or friends or whatever, you can do that, and they also can go to the head of the line to get theirs every week. They just have to pay for it directly every week on the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you contact me on that, I can uh, get out a contract to you, and we'll do that. We've got a few people doing that right now, and it's helped a lot because we're building new processors using those funds, and they're getting a really great deal on their water because they're getting back all of their money, and they're going to the head of the line and not having to wait. <laughs> 
You know, this is a pretty unique and interesting uh, marketing proposition. And again, if you want to contact Jeff, the phone number is United States 570-219-2025. And you can go to the website at jefftech.net. That's J-E-F-T-E-C-H dot net. Jeff, I, what I find interesting about this is that we're at the place right now where we have to, I guess, open source finance projects like this to get them going. My God, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars has jumped change to people who are in the uh, the bio industries right now. The cost of these products, while they are certainly not what you would call inexpensive, when you look at them compared to the cost of pharmaceuticals on a long term basis. I know people that are shelling out twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month to maintain their regimen of big pharma drugs right now. This is um this is a different ball game, it's a different proposition and it's a different marketplace and I'm I'm actually kind of excited about this. Well, it's gonna get very interesting because I had a conversation with Steve yesterday. And I, I told you we're going to be coming out with an electrolyte water that will help people a lot. And we're considering putting a blend into there that really helps prevent a lot of issues by keeping you strong and keeping your system hydrated and getting the electrolytes you need in for proper brain function. A lot of people, when they use the 1X, they basically the things that you can expect are in about a week, you're going to start seeing your blood work changing. So we recommend anybody who gets on the protocol, get your blood work done once before you start. Then do it about a month later. You will be shocked at how fast your blood work comes back into line. It's amazing. PSA scores drop. Um, cancer markers start dropping. All kinds of things. Tumor markers drop. You know, it just really starts happening within about three weeks to a month. Then approximately two to three weeks in, you start getting more energy. And then about six months out, you're looking at feeling like a brand new human being. I'm six months into the protocol now, and they had given me three days left to live in February. Now, I don't know about you, but in my own mind, <clears throat> my voice sounds pretty darn strong. Yeah, it does. And it's because I'm doing the proper supplementation, I'm eating right, and I'm doing the 1X, and it's cleaning my system up like crazy. So you can do these things as preventative measures, and we're going to do a public company that we're going to go forward with publicly um, that will actually have public stock in it at some point, and we're going to start with the, uh, the electrolyte water. So we're going to do crowdfunding to begin with. Uh, I don't know which one we're going to use. We're, there's four or five out there that we're looking at. But we're going to do crowdfunding to get that started, hopefully. And we'll put the information up on the website so people can see the video and decide whether or not they want to invest in it. And at some point, there will be an IPO on it. And we're, we're very encouraged that people are now starting to make changes out in the public consciousness where they are interested in going towards this. I actually heard on CNBC Jim Cramer talking about um, how these hamburger companies and diet soft drink companies and everybody have to start moving towards healthy products and away from all this um, hormone and preservative crap that's out there. And when you hear that stuff in mainstream, I'm telling you, there is a shift, and it's coming, and we want to be part of it. Well, I think, you know, I think as well you'll notice that the mainstream media is slowly, very slowly trying to drift into the side of where they sense that, that people's sensibilities are going. Alternative media, uh, tiny little shows like this one and thousands of them out there that have echoed and repeated these messages that needed to get out are beginning to take their toll on the major media now. You know, exactly. It, you know, Jeff, it used to be that, that people would say, well, you heard that on the Internet. And that was a dismissive statement. Now right. people say, wow, you must have heard that on Fox. And they go, it's like a code for mind control now because most people understand they're not being fed the straight stuff by mainstream media. But it's encouraging to see that, you know, there's some movement. 
it's it's fun because I'm listening now to mainstream talking about how corrupt mainstream is. And when you start hearing that, you know the shift is coming quickly. They they can't uh, they can't have this happen and not make a change. So we have done our job as people in the alternative media because now the mainstream media is following suit. It's slow, like you said, but it's starting to happen. And that's all because people like you did your job. You, Randy. Yeah, and like I said, thousands of others out there who basically, you know, for a lot of us, even though sometimes there's differences in infighting, Jeff, we, we do hold hands. We do push the message out there. And, and over time, these things, you know, this is part of the field effect as well. The, the communicating of truth, there's a resonance pattern to that. And as that resonance pattern goes out, it begins to move into the consciousness. Let's talk a little bit about how that works, because that's part of your background as well. Absolutely. When you look at um, the way a thought, just one thought, propagates, you know, you think, well, it's just one thought. It's no big deal. But what you don't realize is that people all over the world are thinking that same thought. It may only be two in this county, two in that county, four in that state, maybe a dozen in this country. But other people are thinking that thought. That creates a resonance pattern in the consciousness and the more people that start thinking like that or talking about it, the more that resonance pattern builds. And even though the mainstream people don't even understand this, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. Because what's really happening is, is we are constantly barraging that resonance pattern with more and more resonance fields that are complementary that cause it to propagate more and more and more and more people to think it. And as you talk it, you think it, you put it on the radio, it now starts to spread. And as you can see, we're now starting to see in the mainstream, they're talking about the things we talked about 10 years ago. And it took a long time to happen, but that was the effect of the resonance pattern being used. You know, if you look at my bio, we talk about leakage fields and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. and it sounds really esoteric, and it's not. It just happens to be that I understood early on how these things get into the consciousness, and I used radionics to propagate it. I used radionics to actually modify my timeline. And I did this a couple of years ago, and a whole slew of events started to happen uh, that caused all kinds of things that were very positive in my life to occur. Other negative things still happen, sure. but the positive things started coming in in a way they never did before because I modified multiple timelines to bring those into this timeline. And I used radionics to do it. And uh, I used a stick pad response, and I linked it directly with my subconscious and my nervous system so that it, it had a rock-solid link directly to me. And, you know, I use those things to accomplish my goals. But now we've got tools like the SE5-1000. That's a practitioner-level device for radionics with 17,000 codes in it. Granted, it's a $5,000 machine, but if you're going to be a practitioner or you want to get into really high-end radionics where you can affect timelines, that's the kind of device you want. If you can't afford something like that, Get a remote balancer because it has the same range as the SE5 and same power level. The only difference is you can't, you, you don't have the 7,000 code database, and somebody like me with an SE5 makes the cards for you. Big deal. You know, 700 bucks versus 5,000, I think that's a pretty good deal. And you can run that 24 hours a day, any code set you want. So there's, there's a lot of devices out there today that can really help shift consciousness in your home, in your area, like the, the room balancer or the remote balancer, I mean. You can put that in a, uh, a duffel bag, a backpack, whatever you want, and take it anywhere you want with you to work. And you can even leave it in your car because there's a thousand square foot radius for a local field effect area. Mm -hmm. It goes right through metal, buildings, concrete, anything. Nothing stops it because it's a scalar wave. And it takes that information that you put on the card and delivers it. 
and no one has to know you're using it. And it has a battery inside that lasts between four and six months, and then you just recharge it on your laptop, and that's it. So really simple pieces of high-tech devices that you can use anywhere today. And, you know, we're, we're actually, what we're talking about here is reverse mind control. These are the weapons that have been used against us. These are the exactly. weapons that are constantly being used against us. There's no reason we should not be using MK ultra like devices in the scalar wave technology to stop what they're doing to us and to affect ourselves positively. You know, we have used them uh, in court cases, and we've had 100% success rate in them. And that's, that's staggering. We had one case in India where there was somebody that we were using it for, and we were actually able to stop um, a bank from shutting their company down uh, completely for, I think it was like six months. And that's tremendous. And it was a bank that basically was trying to get them to do lo money laundering. And this company said, no, we won't do it. Mm -hmm. So they said, fine, we'll sue you out of existence. Well, we affected all the justices in the court cases for six months, and we put the whole thing off. They couldn't shut them down for six months. Pretty good stuff. That's pretty so interesting. So there's a lot that can be done, but you, you know, it's a learning curve. You've got to learn how to use them for those things. As we kind of go through current events right now, Jeff, we've got so many interesting things going on in the background. One of them is this in this eruption of ISA, ISIS that's going on over... You mean uh, the eruption of the CIA? Program? Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and, you know, here again, I, I think people are getting it. They're suspicious now because they've seen the script before. How do, how do they carve these scripts out? What, what is the end game? Oh, it's, it's brilliant. First of all, Al-Qaeda is a CIA-funded group. They have to have the boogeyman of terrorism out there to keep the funding going, to keep the wars going, to keep the money coming in for all their you know, military-industrial complex. Because what that does is allows them to have an excuse to get into the countries to control the drug trade. Because the drug trade and the resources, you know, like oil and minerals, those are the things they're really after. Because when they can control them, now their masters uh, can get all their money, everything they need, and control of world resources. So Al-Qaeda was a CIA-funded group. And ISIS is nothing more than an offshoot of Al-Qaeda. It's still a CIA group. And anybody who disagrees, that's okay. You can disagree with that. But I know from the inside, you're full of shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think there's a lot of denying it at this point. I mean, like I said, we've seen them run these patterns before. It's like, you know, it's almost become like a football game. After a while, you go, I think they're going to run a screen pass this time. Where they're, you, exactly. we're, we're, start, we're starting to know the plays that they're they're going to run because they're running out of plays at this point. And I, I can't stress this enough to people because there's so much gloom and doom. There's so much death and destruction and woe be gone to speak out there on the Internet especially in the alternate, and this is my criticism of alternative media, is that they don't focus in a balanced way on positives. But Well, they've been co-opted. You have to understand yeah, that, yes. you know, what is that, um, I'm trying to re remember the name of the one, uh, there's one big massive company that's bought up almost all of them. You know, like Coast to Coast and all those others that yeah, are on yeah, well, Premier and then yeah, exactly. um, they were acquired by another company. It's all New World Order controlled. You just have to understand that. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why George Norrie is not allowed uh, to get into deep commentary on some subjects. And that's why John B. Wells was fired. Yes. He was talking about things they didn't want him talking about. Well, they censor this. So it's basically the alternative media has been co-opted. Very few shows like yours are still out there talking about this. I know um, Mel Fabregas, uh, Henrik Palmgren, they still discuss this stuff. Yeah. Carrie Cassidy discusses both sides of the issue, but she also works both sides of the street. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my intention uh, when I stopped working with her was I found out that, you know, she was working with the other side. 
at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Well, and we exposed this two years ago in 2012. We exposed it. That, yeah. That that's exactly what she's doing. And I don't back away from that at all. It wasn't ad no. hominem. It was simply going to her with evidence and saying, look, you know, you're playing a game here. And yeah. and then watching the obfuscation that erupted from all of that, which was quite horrific because we lost a dear friend in the course of that whole debacle. There, there's very nasty things go on in alternative media. So what we do is, is we, we support those who are still working on our side only. And people like you and Mel and, and uh, Henrik and those others, those are people that are working and are not working for the other side at the same time. And I support those people because I think they're doing the best work. And you, like, you clearly are. Uh, Randy, I've, I've listened to many of your interviews, and you really understand what's going on out there, and that's a big deal. No, I thank you for that. Um, it's, an, it's, it's an ever-learning process. And like those scalar waves that you're putting out, I guess that's a part of what we're doing as well, which is, again, why I try to stay balanced. I want people like you to come on and talk about... Uh, the technologies of healing, talking about the, the, the new water systems and talking about uh, holograms and, and healing because people need this. I, I, I'm in constant contact, Jeff, with people who, many of whom have come out of destructive programs like uh, black ops, mind control programs, paramilitary programs, and people that are, you know, have been through uh, satanic ritual abuse and just horrible things. And they need healing on a level, level that's very comprehensive. And here's something that's interesting. You know that I work with the Shiva and the Shakti neurostimulation system, right? Well, there are several doctors right now, these are medical doctors, who are using these systems for PTSD and uh, Alzheimer's and many other things out there and uh, depression, and they're having tremendous results. So people who have PTSD and things of that nature, there's no longer any need for you to suffer. Um, there is a ton of things we can do to get you turned back around and get you straightened out in a reasonably short period of time, a few months at best. And it's just, it's amazing what we're able to do now by working on the mind and working on the subconscious. At the same time, we work on the physical. You know, a lot of people don't realize it, but if you clean your extracellular matrix out, maybe once a year, you keep most of the toxins out of your system that are shutting it down slowly. And it's very simple. And I use clinical grade detoxification systems. And if you add to that the 1X water, which also does detox of heavy metals and toxins, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. You'll drag that stuff out as fast as it comes in the door. And so we have a complete way now of, of improving the nutrition and the health of the human body by using preventative measures to stop this stuff from continuing to harm you. And all you need is a little bit of knowledge to do it. And, of course, I take the phone calls. Um, while you and I were on the phone, we've had several people beep in uh, that are looking to get help, and that's what I do. I take phone calls all day, every day, and I make sure that people get the knowledge they need so they can get where they need to go. Anything else that you got kicking around in your head these days, Jeff, that's, that's kind of uh, maybe uh, new thoughts, new ideas, um, things, things that are kind of forming well, what we're trying to do now is develop new products with the Easy Water, because as you know, there's a state change in it, as verified by Penn State and Arizona State and Washington State. So we have the only water that's available today in a structured water that has a state change, the only one. There's no one else out there with a state change. And we, we've put this out before, you know. If you think your structured water is hot, Get a Raman spectroscopy test from Penn State. And Raman spectroscopy is the way you find out if there is a state change. And if you do that, and you can prove you have a state change, you have something really viable out there. But so far, there's not a single one out there. So we're using it to develop new things to help people. And that's why the mineral water blend we're working on right now is going to be so hot 
because it's going to take care of all of those electrolyte needs that people are missing right now. And Immune Boost does a good job of it in a capsule form, but we want to have something people can take as a water in the grocery store, just like other waters are, but ours is going to be in a glass container so that it's not uh, causing poisonous compounds to get into your body. See, people don't realize that, you know, if you get bottled water out of a grocery store, when that ships in a truck, a freight train, uh, an airplane, a shipping container, whatever, those plastic containers get way up over 87 degrees. They hit 100, 130, 120 degrees. Anytime you get over 87 degrees, you start leaching the chemicals out of those plastics like bisphenol A, BPA, and those others, mm -hmm. and some of the really nasty the, the carcinogens. That, that are also leaching out of the plastics? Yeah, carcinogens and everything else. And it goes right into the water, and you're drinking it. you got to be nuts to be drinking water out of a plastic bottle in the summertime. It's crazy. And any time a storage facility gets over 87, which they all do, um, it's going to leach that stuff into the water. So don't do it. You know, And that's why we're going to be using a glass container in ours. And yeah, it'll be a little more fragile, but at least we won't have any poison going into your system, and we'll be delivering phenomenally good 1X water and the mineral composition you need to make sure your electrolyte balances are there. And when you see how well that helps with the brain fog... Because our 1X is great on brain fog. It does a beautiful job of remediating all of that. And then people will go to the store, they'll pick up a glass of water or a bottle of water, and it will be something healthy to drink. And it will literally improve their body and keep them nearly bulletproof in their cells. That's what we're after. We're trying to make it so that people don't buy junk off the shelves. We let want me, them to buy healthy things. Let me ask you this. Given right now we have a limited capacity on these units, in the future, is it conceivable that these units, um, properly marketed and funded, could become ubiquitous enough that we would be able to have local access to the units, almost like, um, well, remember, I guess back in the early 20th century, spas were very popular, and people would go to these spas for extended stays, to get healing from things. But what I'm thinking is, these units, these, this seems like the foundation for an entire platform of, of healing modalities based on water. What is the potential to eventually f create a system of distribution that would localize the uh, processing? All right. This is something that we are resisting right now. Okay. I'm, saying, I'm only saying right now because we have to work up a model where we have a couple of trusted individuals that are at different locations that can run these. And I'm working on that right now. Steve and I are talking about how we can do it. Because right now we don't want it out there for a couple of reasons. They're very dangerous units to operate, and people are untrustworthy. You know, somebody would come in with a mil five and say, here, here's a mil five, go find a new country, and we're going to take that processor and we're just going to back uh, engineer it. And somebody would have let them do it. Right. So we're looking to do that. And I have a couple of individuals pinpointed for strategic locations. And when that comes about, and Steve is comfortable with it, we, we may actually proliferate this more. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I, down I, the road. And I get the sense this is exotic technology, and I also get the sense that it's very sensitive, and we live in a time when intellectual property is not uh, something that we can take for granted anymore. It's stolen and co-opted. And Oh, my God. The Chinese are doing it every day of the week. You, you build something, and within a couple of weeks, it's in China and being re-engineered. I've I've seen it happen over and over and over again. Yeah, and that's, no, that's I, the reason why we're so careful right now about what we're doing. Yeah, no, they they steal our intellectual property and then sell it back to us for you know chump I change know. for chump change. Yeah, well, Alibaba is coming on the market as an IPO here shortly, and that's a Chinese company that's doing very similar things. We may actually use them for our bottles down the road. I don't know. 
Uh, they've got some pretty good pricing. And what we may do is see about having them build it here in the U.S. Um, we're trying to get more in the U.S., um, but boy, the new world order, they want everything outside the U.S. if they can get it, and we're trying to do more in the U.S. Steve and I could already have relocated internationally, and you can save a boatload of cash in taxes over in the Zug in Switzerland, and Ireland is only 12%. You know, we're 35% over here. We could have saved fortunes on taxes. But we're still here in the U.S. trying to make a go of it and uh, doing the best we can to build the U.S. up. Um, we'll see how long that's able to be done. Time will tell. Ultimately, the challenge seems to be, Jeff, how do we get our economy back? And the answer to that seems to me lies in breaking the public presumptions about banking, about taxes, the IRS, the Federal Reserve, and all the other systems that have grown up around us in 100 years. Do you we think have to build small business, Randy. Um, small business that is unique is the only way to fight the big box companies. And right now, the areas are going to be health care and high tech. Those are the areas we can still fight back. They're great at mass marketing X widget or this box or that uh, towel or um, something in you know Costco or something you'll find in Walmart. But you get into things in health care like what we're doing, um, or high-end technology in healthcare and supplementation. Now you're talking about things that they don't have the capacity to do because they don't have the knowledge base. So I, I tell people, find a way to build a small business that's in a unique niche market that the big box companies don't compete with you on. That's what you have to do. And unfortunately, uh, they've got those markets sewn up. But that doesn't mean you can't come up with something unique. I, I think it's a time for us to become uh, agile, to be in innovative and unique and find marketing solutions right now. We're trying to do it in media right now. We're trying to build platforms. And it's very difficult. Because yeah, your you job with a platform that you rolled out to me, you told me about, that's, that's really the way it has to be done. You are way ahead of the curve. And when people see what you're going to do in the next couple of months, they're going to be staggered. Yeah, and, and it, it is a challenge because people, what, what they've received for free, what they perceive as free from the mainstream media for so long, they're now being asked to support something in, 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 in earnest ways. And we have yeah, to but find only a couple of dollars a month to support somebody like a Randy Morgans is such, such a worthy cause. You know, five, ten, fifteen bucks a month, throw it over there and, and get you guys cooking so that the word gets out faster and better and more and more. Uh, alternative health shows get out there and new things like what we're talking about get aired more so it becomes mainstream for real people. That's kind of that's kind of my hope for what you're doing as well right now is that you build this thing up and and people become aware of it and you know we'll help you blast it out Jeff. Yeah, it's coming along and I see what you're doing in your network building is really making an impact. I think in the next month to two months, uh, you folks are really going to be out there because your worldwide reach is really going to be important in the next couple of months. I think it's real critical right now that we all scale up. And Jeff, I want to thank you for uh, uh, coming back and, and discussing with us the uh, the new things that you've been involved with, the, uh, the H302 Easy Water, which is, I think, just the tip of the iceberg in terms of uh, which, what we're going to see coming out of, out of your work, and uh, the energy healing and all the other things as well. Tell people once again how they can find you, how they can reach you, and uh, what you can provide for them. Absolutely. Uh, my website is www.jef. T-E-C-H dot net. That's jefftech.net, and there's only one F in Jeff. My phone number, direct to my desk, and uh, please call, do not email me, and my number is 570-219-2025 in the East Coast of the United States, and I take calls typically 9 to 5 every day. 
Uh, Sundays, I usually reserve that day for things like radio interviews and as well as some important phone calls on structuring uh, new things that we're doing for the company. Um, But the rest of the week, I'm open. I'm happy to take the phone calls and help as much as I can. And, uh, of course, anything that needs to be done. And you'll hear from a lot of people that talk to me. They, they'll say, well, you didn't sell me anything. I'll say, no, because all you needed was some nutrition advice. You know, And they, they appreciate that because we're not here to sell things all the time. We're here to help. So it depends on what you need, what I'm going to tell you. And uh, I'm not going to tell you something you don't need. And that way you get exactly what you need to fill the problem. And sometimes I just send them to another company that can help them with what their particular need is. It all depends on what they're telling me. So that's called service to others. It's a concept we need to revive as well. Jeff Harvey, thanks for coming on. This is All Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. We'll be back with another show very soon. This is Off Planet Radio.